Zoos play a vital role in the conservation of wildlife. Zoo scientists seek solutions, such as prevention and cures for diseases that cause sickness in animals, and which may also be harmful to human health. We must understand how our actions impact the environment to ensure that both people and wildlife can coexist on a still beautiful planet. The St. Louis Zoo, a leader in wildlife conservation, is involved in yet another crucial conservation project. This one focuses on animals we all know and love, turtles. We work with little box turtles in and around St. Louis, Missouri, as well as giant tortoises on the iconic Galapagos Islands. Zoo scientists study how these species interact with their environment. Giant tortoises may be seen as environmental bulldozers as they move across the landscape, knocking over trees. But they are also delicate gardeners as they prune shrubs and plant seeds. The humble box turtle, which may live a hundred years and store a lifetime of environmental toxins, may serve as sentinels of ecosystem health. These animals may truly be nature's ambassadors. Known as colonians, they are in the only group of species with members that live in oceans and rivers and on land. About half of the 300-odd known turtle species are threatened with extinction. The growing global turtle crisis may be one of the saddest wildlife conservation challenges of our time. Turtles have been on the planet since the time of the dinosaurs. But humans are now driving many of these magical creatures to extinction by both intentional and non-intentional impacts. Giant Galapagos tortoises used to be made up of perhaps 15 species spread throughout the Galapagos archipelago. Three are now extinct because of overhunting, invasive species, and habitat degradation from goats introduced centuries ago by whalers and pirates. In North and Central Americas, there are four species of box turtles with many subspecies. These turtles are threatened by pollution, disease, which are causing significant losses in some places. Adding to their problems, many turtles are hit by cars, tragically, sometimes on purpose. It all seems like pretty bad news, and mostly it is. But there are solutions. In 2011, the St. Louis Zoo established the Institute for Conservation Medicine with its first director, Dr. Sharon Deem. Many people never get to the woods to experience the joy that nature brings. So we combine our research with an active hands-on program that gets young people into nature and doing science. Our work on Galapagos involves trying to understand the migration patterns of giant tortoises and what they mean for conservation. Though 97% of the Galapagos Islands is national park, most of the 3% that's outside the park is also critical seasonal habitat for tortoises. So it's no good protecting tortoises and their habitats only inside the park when they spend half of their time outside the park in privately owned farmland. By understanding the needs of tortoises outside the park, we can help develop conservation plans that protect tortoise habitat throughout their range. We also study tortoise migration because it's interesting and fun to discover secrets from nature. Just why, for example, would a 600 pound tortoise drag itself up and down a volcano every year? To ensure that future generations share a planet with these wonderful animals, we spend a lot of time educating the public, starting with children. We provide outreach programs to a number of local schools in the St. Louis area in which we make students aware of the beauty, wonder, and importance of box turtles. 
We bring hundreds of children into the woods to track turtles and become a scientist for the day. Our approach is to introduce young people to scientific methods with real applications like radio tracking. Students are thrilled to learn about the lives of the turtles that they track, and for many, it's the first time they've ever met a real live turtle. In our increasingly urbanized world, we are just beginning to see the effects human behavior has on wildlife. For example, we are seeing an increase of emerging infectious diseases that are shared between animals and humans. These zoonotic diseases, which include avian influenza, Ebola, and West Nile virus are concerning and can impact the lives of wildlife, domestic animals, and humans. That is why, at the Institute for Conservation Medicine, we take a holistic approach to better understand and help prevent the challenges that threaten the health of all species, from turtles to humans. The St. Louis Box Turtle Project takes place in one of the most beautiful urban parks in the world, Forest Park in the city of St. Louis and at Tyson Research Center, a rural site outside the city limits. Forest Park, with its 1,300 acres in the middle of the city, has a strong goal of conserving biodiversity, including box turtles and other native wildlife. Our study is helping to identify the threats turtles face in this environment and to identify ways to improve conservation efforts. Beginning in the spring of 2012, we fitted little telemetry devices on the turtles so we may track their movements using telemetry technology. We track the movement and health of these 20 or so tagged turtles to determine ranging patterns in and between suitable forest fragments in the park. We also monitor the prevalence of several diseases and track the overall health of the tagged turtles and other turtles we find in the woods. So, what have these scientists discovered thus far about turtle and tortoise health and migration? In Missouri, our research has shown that urban box turtles have very small home ranges compared to the turtles at Tyson Research Center. These turtles in the country have the largest home ranges ever documented for any box turtles. We have also found that turtles living in the heavily trafficked in urban areas have a much higher risk of injury or death from vehicles and lawnmowers. Each year, we discover more about turtles and tortoises in our study areas. These discoveries are helping to inform conservation. We also continually strive to enthuse young people to respect nature with our science and conservation messages. There are ways all of us can help our local wildlife stay healthy. From conserving water and buying local. To simply leaving wild animals in the wild and not keeping them as pets. Educating ourselves on what we can do for wildlife health and conservation. Even small actions lead to big conservation results. <laughs>